gamers, it's time to talk about Tyranids. Of all things, I said to you the Golden Age of Warhammer was over, and I was not wrong. The Golden Age of Warhammer is over. It's time. It's time for Tyranids. It's a bug year. It's a bug's life. Um, it's time for bugs. Uh, bug. It's a buggy bug world. Um, with great bugs comes... Anyway, let's talk about Tyranids. Now, Tyranids are a really strong faction ever since their Octarius update. That was really good, and we saw Manny take 17 Hive Guard and take that all the way to the top at the US Open. But now, it's time for Bugs Part 2. They just had a massive update arriving White Dwarf, Flashpoint Octarius, more Octarius, Octarius on Octarius. I would like an Octarius burger with Octarius sauce, please. And we'll call that Tyranids, Hive Leetle Viathan Part 2. This is the Stampede, or the Crusher Stampede, or something like that. It's an army of renown, okay? We've seen these for many armies. We've seen them in White Dwarfs. We've seen them in supplements. We've seen them... Um, everywhere and they're starting to become a thing where they have some sort of limitation they have a little bit of narrative on top but the narrative doesn't matter because what people do they min max the best units and take whatever they can and it will be full of <laughs> it will be full of that so we're gonna have a look at this spicy octarius burger and i think the big boys with some other hive tyrant and hive guard units are gonna be scary very scary let's take a look so this has been taken from a very credible source in his Wilson's twin. We have the restrictions. You cannot include any swarms and cannot contain any models with a wound characteristic of two or less. It's just a big stuff. No gaunts, no gene stealers, no nothing, okay? And no, and no ripper swarm spam. It's gonna be monster spam and elite spam. So we're talking Tyranid Warriors, Hive Guard, Tyrant Guard, Carnifexers, all the stuff. All the stuff. For each unit for your army that does not have the monster keyword, your army must include at least one monster unit, which is quite cool. It's a monster mash, you know? This is what it is. All units from your army have, must have the Tyranids keyword and be drawn from the same high fleet. So you can only have one high fleet, you can't mix and match. All units gain the Crusher Stampede keyword, which is like the Crusher Stampede is this new army of renown. Units from your army without the monster keyword gain the shielded by the high mind ability, which is they cannot have a high fleet adaptation, which means they can't be Kraken, they can't be Kronos, they'll have the keyword, but they can't gain the adaptation, and they'll have a 5 plus invulnerable save, which is actually probably better than most of the high fleets. <laughs> probably better. So, things like, like Hive Guard, Natural Invun now. Monster units gain the Hulking Behemoth, so it can also never gain a high fleet, which is interesting. Models in this unit have a 5 plus invulnerable save, which is interesting. So basically, the high fleet ability is basically everyone has a 5 plus invulnerable and doesn't have anything else, which is interesting. But each time an attack is allocated to a model in this unit, subtract 1 from the damage. So all monsters are minus 1 damage with no limitation. So they basically have Dreadnought, Etern like Walking Eternal, which is like humongous, okay? But also, it's not the same as Rooker Trucks and all the Orc stuff because... Ramshackle, sorry, because there's no strength limitation. Whereas Ramshackle only works if you are less than strength 7. This is just... Just it. That is it. Minus 1 damage on the board. Models in this unit count as a number of wounds equal to their remaining wounds for the purpose of determining the control of an objective. That is insane. Okay? A Hive Tyrant... He has a 4 plus in Von. He has um, uh, Psychic Powers to give him a 5 plus Feeling of Pain for Catalyst. He's now worth 12 models on an objective. Your Trigons are worth 12 points. Your Dimecarons, I don't even know how many wounds they are, but they have a lot. I know that. Uh, your Barbed Hydrodules have are 200 points and are worth 18 models on an objective. Oof. This is good. This is good. And as the chat have said, okay, you do not have a high fleet adaptation, which means, let's say, you wanted to run some random high fleet like Leviathan, okay? Like high fleet Leviathan, for example. 
you don't get the High Fleet adaptation, which the adaptation is a six up ignore damage. That's that's um, that's a High Fleet adaptation, okay? Such as Kraken is roll 3d6 to the advance and pick the highest. That's that High Fleet. However, you still have the Leviathan keyword, which makes you a Leviathan detachment. <laughs> <laughs> which <laughs> which means all the really 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 good stratagems that they have such as sixes to hit our two hits with hive guard such as uh, probably gain next to warlord traits such as redeploy that they've just got and chapter master they can probably get you get those as well why not just get them as well just have them as well you may as well who cares you can literally do what you want. This is Warhammer, okay? This is just what you do. You just take everything and take everything. You get the burger, you get the sauce, and you just... Okay, that's page one, and I'm already annoyed about it. I'm already annoyed about it. If your Crusher Stampede models your wallet, it can have one of the following war wallet traits below instead of one from another sauce. Another sauce. It's not even saying one from the codex. It's saying you can have any you like, such as Swarm Alpha Leader thingy, Chapter Master. Anyway, do we actually want any of these? I don't know. We have Raging Influence, which is an aura. While a friendly Crusher Stampede monster is within six inches of this Warlord, each time that model makes a melee attack on a modified hit roll of six, scores one additional hit. You'd prefer Chapter Master, but it's not bad. It's not terrible. If you're not running Leviathan, it's actually a decent Warlord trait. Put on a Hive Tyrant, you know, put on anything. You also get Savage Intimidation. While a model enemy is within three inches of this Warlord, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, minus one to hit. So the, the Warlord is minus one to hit in combat, basically. Awesome. Each time a combat attrition attack is taken, subtract one from the combat attrition test. Also not bad. It's not a bad warlord trait. Rampaging Beast. Once per turn, when this warlord is selected to fight, you can use this warlord trait. If it does so until the end of the phase, add D3 to the attack, warlord's attack characteristic. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. It's not bad. I think I'd prefer this one. I think I'd, if I was running either, I think I'd prefer this one because I think you have more chance of getting two rather than one. But also this is like guaranteed, but this is like dice rolls. It depends who's your warlord, you know? They're all really good warlord traits. They are really good though. Okay, we have stratagems. Uh, use this stratagem in the fight phase when a Crusader Stampede monster, so monster, from your army has finished a piling move. Select one enemy monster or vehicle unit within engagement range of that model. Until the end of the phase, that model can make only a makes attack against that selected unit. And each time it makes an attack, add one to hit. Add one to wound, add one to damage. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> this is brilliant. This is great. Cool. This is pretty good. It's 2 CP, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I quite like it. Bearing in mind you can use this for sixes to hit his additional hit, and then use this and use flurry, flurry of Blows. So sixes to hit are three hits, not two, and you get plus one to hit, wound, and damage. Be really good. Uh, terrifying charge. One CP. Use this charge in the start of the morale phase. Like one enemy unit with engagement range of a, of a monster from your army that made a charge move this turn. Till the end of this turn, subtract three from the leadership characteristic of models in that enemy unit. Minus in leadership isn't so strong anymore, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad for one CP. We have the unbreakable shit in. Use charge in any phase when a crusher stampede unit from your army is selected as a target of an attack. Till the end of the phase. <laughs> It's time to attack his many gets that unit. The unmodified wound roll of one three that fails. Oh my god, Tim is just like hate space marines so much that he just copied them word for word. <laughs> Irrespective of any abilities that weapon or model making the attack may have. If that unit contains five or more models, or contains models with a wound practice of ten or more, this strategy counts as two CP, if not it costs one. You've got to be cheating me. <laughs> Trans everything. <laughs> All armies get transhuman. Transhuman for you. Transhuman for you. Why not? Everyone take one. It's free. Uh. <laughs> Tyranids are so fed up with being beaten. They are so fed up with being beaten by space marines. They were like, them dreadnoughts are well hard to kill. We'll take minus one damage. Right? <laughs> Their shooting's right good. We'll take chapter master. We're actually dying a little bit too quickly already. We'll take transhuman. Fuck it. Why not? 
Primaris Tyranids. Fuck it. Why not? Here we go. Primaris, everybody. We've got Primaris Plague Bearers in Age Sigma now. We've got Primaris in Space Marines, and no one would bother about the old stuff. Now we've got Primaris Tyranids. Transhuman at minus one damage, everyone. They hate Space Marines so much, they took Psychic Forges off them for a 5 plus fill in run on everyone. That's true in law, bio adap adaption. They are supposed to copy what they fight, it's their thing. This is very true. This is very true. But in a in a game balance, that's not quite <laughs> how you're supposed to do it, you know? It's like, oh, but in the law, it's like the orcs get bigger because they want to fight bigger things. Well, give them unique rules, you know? Don't just give them the same. <laughs> Death Surge. This is the fight phase when a Crusher Stampede monster, excluding characters from your army destroyed, do not remove that model from play. It can fight after the attacking model's unit has finished making attacks. When doing so, that Stampede model is considered to have its full wounds remaining for the purpose of, purposes of determining what characteristics on its profile to use. After resolving the destroyed model's attacks, it is then removed. Interesting. 2 CP to fight on death with any monster, but not character. We've got now breaking through 1 CP. Use this charge in your charge phase when a Crusher Stampede model from your army finishes a charge move. Select one enemy model within engagement range of that monster and roll a d6 equal to the model's remaining wounds. If that model's strength characteristic is higher than the enemy's toughness characteristic for each 3 plus, that unit takes a mortal wound to a max of 6. That's a lot of mortal wounds. That's a lot of mortal wounds. That's still mortal wounds. If that monster's strength characteristic is the same as the enemy's model's toughness characteristic, or each roll for 4 plus or a 5 plus if it's higher. Now, there's not many monsters with low low strength or toughness. It's like strength 6, strength 7, strength 8. So, they've got really high strength anyway. So, that is like, as, as Colt just said, that is very consistent. Six more wounds. That is not a low... That's not two more wounds in most times, you know? And you think how many wounds you have remaining. Barbed Hyrajul. <laughs> the Harida. One CP. <laughs> Oh, no, this is so bad. Oh, no, this is so bad. 35. Imagine a Haridan turn one charge. Right, 35 three ups. Maximum of six. 35 chances to get us three up. Oh, oh no. Where's Joseph when I need him? I need Joseph Joestar. Charging to a Dread Knight. Imagine ki half killing a Dread Knight before you actually roll to hit. Charging as a character. Screens are back on the menu, boys. <laughs> Harry Dan is who is T8. Fight. He now has a 5 plus in one. He's minus one damage with transhuman on 2 CP. He's also minus one to hit because he's airborne. You select an enemy model with an engagement range and roll a number of D6 equal to that monster's remaining wounds. That model's unit. Gamers. Gamers. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you choose a model in the unit, and the unit takes the mortals. <laughs> oh. oh, no. It's only six. It's only six more wounds every charge phase. But So what you're saying is we've got the burger, caked it in sauce, and now we're dropping it in a pot of gravy to soak everything up. Yeah, we've got the gravy soaker. We've got the gravy soaker right in the middle. Oh, mate, what are they doing? Honestly. All right, we've got radip, rapid adaptation. So you're doing all this. Use this before the battle when you're mustering your army. Select one crusher stampede. Tuned warriors unit for your army. Models in that unit have a weapon skill uh, of 2+, plus and ballistic skill of 3+. plus. You can only use this strategy once. Uh, that's I like that's that's actually like a nice stratagem. This, this is like a nice stratagem, you know? Um, enhanced brain functions. Use this strategy in your shooting phase. Select one terminated warriors unit for your army that is within engagement range of any many models. Until the end of the phase, models in that unit can that can make range attack using the big guns never tire rule. As if they are the monster keyword. Okay, so they can shoot in combat. You know what? These are nice. These are just like nice. They're, they're, they're good, but they're not like, oh my god, they're just good, you know? These are just nice stratagems. Synaptic Barrier. Okay. Has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select one stampede model within 18 inches. So they are in the next phase. That model has a 4 plus in one. Well done. Well done. Aggressive Surge. Warp charge value of 6. Really low. This is way too low, by the way. 6 is terrible. It should be 7 or 8 at least. 
Um, select one friendly Crusher Stampede model within 18 inches to that sign next second phase. Add D3 attacks to the characteristics of that model. That's really good. That's really good. Infuse energies. Uh, warp charge 6. Again, if manifested, select one Stampede unit, excluding Synapse within 18 inches. Each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, you can reroll the hit roll. So, Chapter Master in combat. Chapter Master in combat. They don't need D3 extra attacks after the six mortal wounds. <laughs> That's just for the Swarm Lord afterwards. Or a Chaplain. Yeah, it's a, it's a Chaplain. A Psychic Chaplain on a single unit. Um. Um. I think that's all I can really say. It's just. Um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> this is horrific. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrific. Uh, I hear Mikey's Blood Ravens have always been turned into nothing to do with the rules in law. Mikey's Blood Ravens have always been turned into successes. No, what's actually happening is the Tyranids are becoming Blood Ravens. <laughs> the Blood Ravens aren't becoming Tyranids. The law says that Tyranids copy what they fight. They fight them in Dawn of War 2. Tyranids are Blood Ravens. <laughs> Gamers, I don't want to fight Nids. I don't think I want to fight Nids either. <laughs> I can run a monster mash. I have like two trigons, two Morlocks. I can re like re run like a really fun, cool monster mash. However, listen. Listen. Always been a fan of Tyranids, okay? I'm, I'm like a narrative player, okay? I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very big narrative player, okay? And, um... I just love the lore of Tyranids. Um, I want to cosplay as Tyranids. You know? And it was it was really cool. It was really, really, really narrative and fun. I really enjoyed it. You love the lore, do you? What brought them to our galaxy? Listen, Des, they were always there. They are the ultimate evil, right? There was a man um, called a Promethean, right? And he was on a chair in that movie i don't i don't really know what to say about these rules because they are actually horrendous and they are actually horrendous what the, like on it's really tough because on one side two name monsters have been bad for a long time they've been really bad for a long time i love running a trigon and a trigon prime because i think they're really cool and they're relatively cheap they don't do a lot they usually die okay I think they're really cool because that's why I always run two. I mean, I've played a couple of games with Tyranids on stream now. I always have Trigons in there because I think they're really cool. But they've been bad for a long time. Carnage Effects is really good in like third edition. Trigons were good for like a week when they came out. And then seventh edition came out and made them really bad. They've just had the Leviathan update in Octarius, which made Tyranids or even not the units that Tyranids want to use, but made Tyranids as an army really good. Now, should, is an army really good if units are good? Or is it really good if the units you want to use are good? That's another question. That's completely something else. But Tyranids as an army are already really good. And then what you what you can do with this army of renown is take all of the best stuff. You can't take the rubbish. You can't take Gaunt. You can't take Ripper Swarms because you can't. But you can take Hive Guard. Okay. You can still take Hive Guard with this. And run them as Leviathan, which gives them access to the stratagem for Symbiostorm. Okay, it gives them chapter master, chapter master rerolls, etc. So you can take all the hive guards you like, and then you can take trigons, you can take dimecarons, you can take haridons, hyrajules, anything from Forge World, which is going to be really strong. Okay, and you can just take that and just smash face because you have all of the rules that you want from Leviathan, except for the six up feeling of pain. Okay. Yeah, you can't make a unit Gene Stealers Kraken, but you can't take Gene Stealers, so it doesn't matter. And then you can take all the cool monsters you want from Forge World that are all really broken and cheap in China. You know, you just buy them from China, like £5, you get them, and you got the best time in the game. And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it now. Campaign supplements shouldn't be in 40k. They shouldn't be in competitive because they are getting out of hand. They're getting out of hand. Now, if I said that, that means Tyranids are back to the dumpster fire, you know, because they are shit without them. However, <laughs> what 
are you supposed to do? <laughs> this isn't even like, oh, it kind of looks good, we'll try it out. This is just blatant English of broken. This is just blatant English of just like, all the monsters are really bad and they're already really cheap in points because they're so bad and they're still bad. So we'll just give them every rule under the sun as well as mortal wound outpour, as well as super defensive and super killy all at the same time. This is not the way, as Legend of Nature said. I can <laughs> I can take all the monsters I want with all the hive guard I want, okay, in 2,000 points. I can literally only take hive guard and monsters. I don't have to take troops because I can't really take them bartering any warriors, right? They all get a fit and an in one. Okay, Hive Guard's biggest weakness, if you do get seen, they only have a 4 up save. That is their biggest weakness. Now they've got an invun. Minus 1 AP max against them, okay? <laughs> All the monsters, none of them have an invun. No one in Tyranids has an invun, barring the characters, okay? Swarm Lord, Hive Tyrant, they've got a 4 plus invun, right? Let's just give the entire army an invun, okay? The entire army a 5 plus invun. Fuck it, who cares, right? And then what we'll do is we'll reduce damage by 1. Right, if it stopped there, it would be fine. But no, we'll make all the monsters count as loads of models on the way objective. So unless you've got objective secured, they've got it. And then we'll we'll make them minus one damage and then give them access to transhuman whenever they need it. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> <laughs>